I haven't made a concept journal and I think it's been like a year and the idea of two sisters came into my mind two sisters with two completely different personalities yet very similar in the things that they like however completely different styles and I want to create two different journals at the same time using two different color palettes but somehow combining both spirits of the journals so that you can tell that they're sister journals. So these are my materials that I'm going to be using to create the base of the journal. And then for the jellies and the jams that you can add on top of them, like the fabrics, the wallpapers, the laces, the details and the decorations come after. But first, we need to create our base. I'll be sharing with you the fabrics and the papers that I'll be able to decorate these two sister journals with. This is so exciting. I've never done something like this before, and I'm extremely excited. These are pieces and snippets of Marielle's creative journal, a diary where she holds her favorite colors that represent her soul and personality, her watercolors that she takes with her everywhere she goes, as she sees the world in color, sentiments where she holds special treasures and memories in her book, a fabric sample in her favorite color, monogrammed by her darling mother when she was little, pockets where she colors the pages of her journals. Marielle's creative journal consists of pieces and treasures that tells her story through the treasures that you find in her journal. This is Rosabella, the younger sister to Marielle, and she also has her own personal creative journal as they are both artists and extremely creative thanks to their mother. However, Rosabella's dream is to be a seamstress. And throughout her journal, you'll see pieces of laces, embroidery, beautiful florals, pockets, having some of her favorite laces and fabric designs. She stitches her memories throughout her journal, and that is how she expresses herself. It all started with a little piece of fabric that her mother embroidered for her. Monogrammed with an R for Rosabella, so that she knows how special and loved she is. A beautiful journal that represents herself, and you'll see all of her personality and her style stitched throughout her journal pages. So I have the papers in front of me. These papers that I just designed are probably my favorite digital kits that I've made up to this point in time. I wanted to create a coordinating paper kit that went along really lovely with Marielle's creative journal, but also stood out on its own. For all of us who loves roses, who likes the cranberry jewel tones, there's purples, there's reds in here, and probably one of my favorite papers in the whole collection, this gorgeous rose, and this really sweet little French journaling spot that you can add to any journal really pretty papers and I hope you love matching them along with Marielle's creative journal or just working with them individually. I just passed this really beautiful cardstock through my embossing machine. Gorgeous frames that I think would look beautiful on the covers or maybe on the inside of the journals. This is of course, you guessed it, for Marielle and this is for Rosabella. I do want to antique them a little bit so that they look a little bit more aged and they match the covers and the style of the journals really well. If you guys are interested, let me know. Create some little bundles of these and many more. Let me know in the comments below. Oh my gosh, you could see my cutting marks on the table. <laughs> I really love the more pastel papers that I designed to go along perfectly with Rosabella's kit if you wanted to combine both of them or if you just wanted to use this one independently. Really beautiful florals and lilacs. I think these papers go perfect with the fabrics that I'm going to be using. So I can't wait to combine the fabrics, the laces, along with the papers to create a Rosabella Artist in Bloom and a Marielle Artist in Bloom. 
I've laid out my main papers, which is Marielle's color palette as well as Rosabella's color palette, and I'm trying to match up certain other papers from the collection to see which one goes better with their personalities. And of course, you'll be seeing the finished product, but it's really important to pick papers that match your fabrics. So the outside matches the inside. Based on the photos of Rosabella and Marielle, it's giving me a lot of inspiration. And I think I'm going to stick to blue-green tones with Marielle and rosy pink tones with Rosabella, of course. So more of a pastel theme with Rosabella and a little bit deeper, richer colors with Marielle, but making sure that the blue and the teal and greens are represented. And I'm so happy because I typically don't use a lot of greens in my journals and I have some green papers that I designed back here that I'm so excited to incorporate. So now that I have an idea of where I wanna take th this concept of these two beautiful sisters, let me start creating their bases because without the base, their journals won't exist. <laughs> so I have to go and do that first. I decided to change the base to these book covers. They're a little bit smaller, just by a couple inches, because the papers, I want them to peek out from the sides of the cover, since this is going to be a layered journal. So this matches this cover perfectly, size-wise, and then I thought it would be so nice to make, since Rosabella is the younger sister to Marielle, Rosabella's journal a little bit smaller. Now to create the base, I'm not only going to be using recycled materials and packaging, but I'm also going to be using antique book pages, pretty much just the clear side or the cream side of them. So if you have just a book page that has a design that you don't really think you're going to use, just like this little fish here, poor little fish, that looks like it hurts. I don't know. For some reason, when I see images like this, it just makes me sad. So we're just going to turn it around and we're going to use it in our Artist in Bloom. And I'll show you at the end, the finished result, how you can take pages like this, recycle them and cover them up with maybe antique papers if you have any or digitals that mimic antique papers. Here I have real wallpapers from my collection that have been, I believe, in many bloom packs. So you guys probably have this as well. But it's very fragile to you sometimes. But you can use any textural paper, anything that will add color, dimension, texture to your bases is very important. And I also have just a little bit of inspiration things. And here, I think I have a button and a little bead that I want to use for Marielle's journal. So I'm slowly gonna be collecting things and putting them in this little tin so that we can also add some jewelry pieces and some beads on top. I'm talking as if we're making like cupcakes and this is the dough and the batter. And then the beads and the buttons are like the sprinkles. So I think that's my little recipe towards making my journals, to select papers that mean something to you, that match your color palette, as well as your base papers. And then on the top, add your embellishment pieces that go with the theme of the journal. A way that I like to use papers such as this that have like antique script on them, this is from Marielle's kit. You can most certainly use the full page in a project, but I like to cut little strips off and use them as little strips to add more texture and more elements to a page. So that's a nice little tip. You can use your papers as full papers, but you can also use them as you would antique ephemera if sometimes you would tear off little strips or I would tear off this little piece. You could tear off this. You could fuzzy cut around this. So there's a lot of possibilities for how you can use even the smallest piece of paper in your journal making. So Marielle's journal is coming along beautifully. I have finished my journal bases and now I'm choosing the papers to put inside of the journal. And of course I'm using the actual papers that come in the kit for Marielle's creative journal, but I'm also using some French letters, music paper, and other papers from other kits that I've created using the pastel ledgers as that's a great standard paper to use in any journal. And then this is a cover sheet to some vintage music, like a vintage music sheet cover. And I folded it so that I could have a tech spot writing space and put this inside of my journal. And I just reinforced it with masking tape. 
so these are the papers that are going to go inside of my journal for Marielle. And then I also have these really beautiful paper sheets. My artist papers that are professionally printed. There's two different sets, one more pastel and one more jewel toned. So now that I have finished Marielle's journal base, I need to now start creating Rosabella's as we're making two journals at once. So when you finish one task for one, you need to start the next task for the other one. This is a beautiful purple silk that I want to use on the cover of Marielle's journal. I think as like a little ruffle. And I'm not sure if to include it on the inside papers or on the cover. Just a little remnant of silk goes such a long way. It looks kind of raggedy <laughs> and forgotten, but believe me, it is not because all you need to do is incorporate it and add it and find its rhythm on your journal covers and it ends up transforming it. I looked into my scraps and I found some of this beautiful lace. The easiest lace to find is obviously white and like ecru, but I love champagne colored lace. So I'm excited to use that on the cover of Marielle's journal. And because Marielle is a little bit older, I think this lace suits her a little bit more. And then I'm thinking this lace, this beautiful cotton French lace for Rosabella as it matches the color palettes and there's more white, as you can see in the journal covers for Rosabella. So we're going to match it up with this lace here. This really beautiful golden mustard that would make a beautiful pocket. When you're using something like this, it already has so much texture on it that no matter how you fold it, you immediately have these gorgeous little ruffles that add so much texture and a really romantic touch to your journal covers. I think we need a little bit of tatted lace around that little ruffle to bring in all the laces that will be peeking out and to bring in a bit more of that white color since the spine is going to be this antique linen. So we need some lace. This is my little cupboard where I keep some yarns and some laces. And I think we're going to use a little bit of this. This is my prized possession when it comes to lace. So I just get a little snippet. It's kind of like I'm coming to my little apple tree and just cutting a little apple but in the shape of tatted lace. By the way, these little scissors are some really darling scissors that I got from an estate sale. This sweet little lady had her sewing basket and they became my lace scissors because they're so tiny, yet they're super sharp, so I love them. It's like a little tatted lace band-aid. Oh, hello ring. Oh, look at that. <gasps> That is beautiful. Okay, I'm getting distracted. So I'm thinking of taking this gorgeous cover. So what I'm imagining is something like this. Oh, so beautiful. I am enjoying so much this process. I'm taking my time. I'm not stressing out about what the final product will look like. I'm just taking my time and working page by page. And I think that is the key to making two journals at once. Try not to look at the end product, just focus on that journal in its own soul, in its own right, and then it just kind of all works out because you're just having fun. I actually decided to do, go against my plan of adding the tatted lace on the ruffle and instead on the bottom. I don't want to disrupt the pretty pink champagne ruffle, but what if we add one of these really pretty jewels right along the ruffle? So it accompanies the tatted lace and it also gives a little bit more of some bling to the ruffle. This will be our bling for the Rosabella cover. And then for Marielle, it's the sequence. And maybe I can add a little emblem there or at the top. We'll see what I end up finding to decorate the front cover completely. So this is currently Rosabella's journal in progress. And I am working on, look at how beautiful it looks. I'm so excited. I really want to add one of my arched pockets. And of course, pockets typically go on the bottom, like a standard pocket. Imagine how cute that would look adding it right up here at the top, kind of like a little crown to your page. And then when you fold it over, it peeks out from the top. Ooh. 